These magnificent Cornish moorlands are host to a deep and rich geological history. And that history goes back hundreds of millions of years. But it's also influenced the present industrial heritage of Britain. And that geology is no better represented than by these massive granite tours that litter here and all around the moorland areas around us. A tour is an eroded remnant of a granite intrusion formed by weathering processes over millions of years. The classic building block shape of these granite tours is all down to the structure inside. All the big joints and cracks is the way it weathers. But it's the granites that I've come here to see. We're going to go and hunt around now, find some fresh surfaces and find out just exactly how this forms. Granite is an igneous rock formed by melting processes in the Earth's crust. It can be formed in a number of ways, but is commonly associated with mountain building events, when the Earth's tectonic plates collide with great force. This causes the crust to thicken and melting occurs. Before these granites were solid rock, they're actually molten magma, which was slowly moving its way up through the much colder surrounding rocks. As it moved up, it slowly crystallized and grew very, very large crystals. Ah, oh, look at this face. When we get close up to the granites, it's very easy to see the characteristic minerals that they possess. That's because they're so large. Look at this giant felspar here. That probably started growing first in the magma. All around it you see lots of these sort of see-through grey minerals. That's quartz, the same thing that you get in the glass of your house. And on close inspection there's lots of shiny faces. Silver-like ones, that's muscovite mica, a certain type of mica in the rock. And then there's these rusty brown ones, that's biotite mica. Now these contain lots and lots of metals within them. If we can find a geological process that gets those metals out and concentrates them, we could be into something that's economically viable. What's even more fantastic is you can look at these rocks in glorious detail under a microscope. And in the modern era, we can actually do that on a virtual microscope, which I'm using here. You can use this on a tablet, on a smartphone, on the web, anywhere you can get access to get right down and look at the minerals. It's a beautiful mica there in fantastic, glorious colour. These rocks here are quite fresh and solid, but that's not always the case, as we'll see when we look at some of the other granites around Cornwall. This gigantic hole in the ground is Will Martin China Clay Pit. Now they've been mining clays like this in Cornwall for over 200 years and it has many, many uses, most famous of which is for porcelain, which is exported all over the world. But what many of you may not realise is that this clay was once granite. So how do you go from a solid granite like this to clays like this. When the granites are in place, they have hot fluids associated with them. These fluids reach out into the surrounding rocks, but also start the early stages of alteration of the minerals within the granite itself. When a magma comes in and solidifies to a granite, it actually takes a long time to cool. And that's because it contains its own heat engine Locked up in the minerals are radioactive elements that give off heat. Because of those radioactive elements, the granites stay far hotter than the surrounding rocks for a long, long period of time after they've solidified, many millions of years. And it's that heat from the hot granites at depth that cook up the groundwater in the surrounding rocks. They start to generate massive hydrothermal circulation bringing in quite aggressive corrosive fluids into every nook and cranny within the granite. They start to leach out key elements, altering the crystals and ultimately changing something 
which is a solid rock, to a massive clay pit. But transforming granites, solid granites like this, to clay takes millions and millions of years. But it's the first fluids that come in with the molten magma that carry that extra special ingredient. Whenever we find granites in contact with the rocks around them, it's never a simple contact. The hot magmas that come in are laced with fluids, and these fluids shoot out into the surrounding geology and cause mineralized layers, like we see on this outcrop here. The thing that's important about these mineral veins, you can see some light and dark ones shooting through this boulder here, is that these are filled with many elements some of which are precious. Now these veins here are actually quite small and the crystals inside are quite difficult to see. But in many instances the veins are really big and the crystals quite large. Now I've been given some samples by the Will Martin China Clay Museum here to show you some of those. Now there, this one here is some beautiful tourmaline crystals with some quartz in the background, really quite pretty. Tourmaline's a little bit like a bucket mineral. It can take a whole range of different elements, but it's concentrated in boron. We see some beautiful color minerals, like this one, turquoise here. You also get malachites and other minerals rich in copper. That can be quite important. But this one, ooh, it's quite heavy actually. It doesn't look like much, but this is made of a mineral known as cassiterite. And that's what Cornwall's famous for, because this contains tin. 